Hi there, welcome to chendu.org. Last Friday we were talking about how to find the sum of top three values meeting a criteria. And uh, it, it is always surprising to me, especially when I'm using Excel, that there is so much more to learn in Excel. And, uh, and, and the nature of Excel is, uh, I think uh, Rob Coley was mentioning this in his blog today as well, that it has network effect. There are so many features that can work with each other. So even if you know feature A and feature B, you still don't know how to use A with B and B with A. So that, that itself has added two more possibilities to you. Now when, when there is a feature called feature C, then it is going up by that fraction. So the essential nature of Excel, which has thousands of features, is that there are just so many more possibilities in Excel that uh, that it is always exciting. So in the comments of the sum of top three uh, values, someone uh, suggested, why don't you use aggregate formula? And I'm like, what? Aggregate formula? I never heard about that. So I went and explored that and it is such a beautiful formula. All it does is it will let you do some aggregate calculations. You could think of that like a subtotal but with a few more additions. So. Uh, it will let you do some calculations on the filtered lists. That is, if a list is filtered, it will only use the filtered values to do the aggregation. Essentially like subtotal, but it subtotal will not let us do like calculate the second largest value or third largest value, those kind of things, whereas aggregate would let us do that. So it is a very, very powerful formula. And I got thinking, hey, you know what? We could use aggregate formula and we can go one step further use Excel 2013 where you can add slicers to regular tables so then uh, then in my mind I have this solution that's what you're seeing on the screen so what we have is a sum of top three values and the total let me very quickly show you the formula the formula for some of the first top one value is aggregate 14 14 is nothing but the function code 14 stands for large 15 is for small like that there are uh, 16 or 17 different functions and 3 means what kind of inclusion you want to do in this case I want to exclude any values that have errors in them any values where which are hidden because there is a filter applied in them etc etc so those values should be excluded and that's aggregate 3 it also has certain other things but we don't need to worry where is the data data is calculate that calculate the largest value from projects 3 projects 3 is this table name budget column okay and one means I want the first largest value so the formula for the second largest value is exactly same oops uh, but with the 2 at the end okay so when you when you write this aggregate formula it is going to give you the highest value in the budget column but whatever is visible so once I have done this, once I have these three, I have written a sum formula that will add up those three numbers. The next step for me would be uh, add slicers to this table. Now that part can only be done in Excel 2013. But hey, uh, I got Excel 2013 and I believe some of you already are on it. So it's, it's a good way to do. So you go to insert and, uh, and then we just uh, insert a slicer. So in Excel 2010, slicer can only be added when you are in a pivot table, but in 2013, you can add a slicer to a regular table as well. So we just put the slicer and then uh, add these two slicers. When you are in the table, a slicer would show which columns you want the slicer on, and then we'll just select region and rank as the two columns. So the slicers would come up there. Now let's see what happens. If I click on East, the table gets filtered, so only region East remains, right? and the top three values change because the aggregate function now works only on the displayed values and then we'll, we do it for high so in the eastern region high ranking projects out of them the top three budgets are 28 27 and 24 and the sum is 79 so this is pretty awesome it doesn't require any type of array formulas or anything not even creating a pivot table all you have is your data is, is there and you put the uh, calculations above it why on the top why not at the side that's because when you are filtering what excel really does is it hides some rows so you can see row number 10 11 12 were hidden 13 is visible so if you put the data right here then uh, sometimes it will be visible sometimes it is not because 
the rows on which the numbers are they may be hidden so you need to put the values above it other than that it's pretty cool right and the beauty of all this is you could even take this this table take this table and move it somewhere else right the original data table can stay in another sheet and in the output sheet you can just have the top three values summary and the and the slices so you would be slicing and, the, and then that table changes uh, the output values change but the table need not be on the same sheet so it can be in a separate sheet so even if it is visible or invisible it doesn't matter so that's how easy it is to use and and it is always surprising to me i mean uh, i i have not used aggregate function two days before and now i'm using it and i'm making a demo of it and some of you might wonder hey chandu why are you showing us your face <laughs> that's because uh, this is I'm actually recording this video on a computer desk that Bill Jelen, Mr. Excel, has loaned me. Funny story, so let me just tell you that as well. When I went to meet Mr. Excel, Bill Jelen, last Friday, uh, I heard that he's actually moving, he's selling all his house and positions in Ohio and he's moving to Florida, right? Because he has family there and he has a couple of houses there as well. So then I got talking and then Bill Jelen said, uh, hey Chandu, if you need any furniture, I know you're new in US and you're only here for a couple of months, but if you need any furniture, you're free to take anything that we have here. I'm like, uh, thank you so much, Bill, but uh, uh, I think we have everything. And then it struck me, can I, can I actually take your computer desk because I'm really working on my dining table and I think I could use a computer desk. And Bill is like, yeah, that, that's fine. But we didn't have any way to get it here, so, uh, but we also made plans to meet up next Friday, which was uh, three days ago. So Bill said, uh, I'm going to bring the computer desk with me when, when we meet again next Friday in, in Cleveland. So Bill got me a computer desk, a chair, <laughs> and, and now I'm, I have set up a small working room, office desk kind of thing in our apartment. And I feel so good about it. I mean, who would have thought... Uh, at least I never thought I would be in US uh, and actually meet Mr. Excel and get a chance to use his computer desk when I'm here. <laughs> so it feels so fortunate and uh, so humbling. So thank you so much for watching Chandu.org video and I hope you have learned how to use aggregate formula. You can check out more information about aggregate formula on Chandu.org or even on contextures.com. I see that uh, Deborah from Contextures has written an article about aggregate. So it must be something that she has also discovered recently so thank you so much and i wish you a great day ahead bye, -bye.